Hi there, this is Eric Gardner with eXp Realty and today we're going to talk about the unaffordability housing crisis. With prices skyrocketing throughout COVID, we know affordability has gone down the drain. That's the biggest concern in Utah and it's a huge concern across the nation. So let's dive into some details from the 2023 market and how 2024 might be a little different. So checking out what we're, we're reading an, an article from Adam Data, and you know we talk about despite steep interest rates, little residential inventory and falling sales, 2023 stood up fairly well. You know, surprisingly, there was a huge 15% decrease in total units sold compared to the previous year, but still, we didn't have this giant recession, I guess. We definitely had prices flatten out, maybe increase just a hair, units totally decreased, but no crazy crash yet. But according to Adam, single family homes and condo prices fell slightly between June and October, you know, from 350 to 345, similar to some of the stats we've talked about here on the channel. However, it's also true that home prices increased by more than 42,000 between January 302,000 to October 345. Unit sales were down 14.6% from a year earlier as of October, the slowest existing home sales in, since August 2010, according to the Association of Home Builders. So that 15% decrease is same what we, like, what we talked about here in Salt Lake City, and it's happening nationwide. So NASA Association of Realtors says existing home prices rose 9% in 2019. You know, this is how the, that unaffordability crisis started, was we had COVID, all this money came into the system, everyone wanted to work from home, and there's this huge demand increase from 2020, 2021, 2022. So that caused home prices to increase. This is also caused because of the cheap interest rates. You know, they got down, a 30 year fix got down 2.7%, I believe. So in 2019, prices rose 9%. In 2020, 12.9%. In 2021, 15.4%. And in 2022, 10.22%. Those are huge price gains while our economy was fighting inflation. You know, everything was getting more expensive. And so far, inflation has come down. You know, the Fed raised interest rates a ton. And overall, inflation has come down. But these housing prices have not. And what what's causing a lot of issue is wages have not kept up with these home prices, causing that affordability issue. So such huge price increases over the past five years are wonderful for owners, they say, but making purchase difficult or impossible for millions of would-be buyers, so those first-time home buyers. Worse, incomes have not only failed to keep up with rising prices, but they've also declined. According to the Census Bureau, real median household income went from 76,330 in 2021 to 74,580 in 2022, a 2.3% drop. So that's real median income. You know, when they adjust it for inflation, that's your purchasing power year over year. So decrease 2.3%. Redfin pointed out in October, a home buyer must earn 114,000 to afford the median priced US home, up 15%, up 15,285 from a year ago and more than 50% since the start of the pandemic. So a 50% increase on that. So before it was probably like $75,000 you needed as a median, as a home buyer to buy a median price home in the United States since the start of the pandemic in 2020. That's the highest annual income necessary to afford a home on record. So that's part of this affordability issue. You know, prices increased, but real income did not. And so a lot of people, you know, it's just, it's just getting really freaking hard. So maybe inflation's going well, but let's keep going. So we want to talk about the inventory problem because that's what really stalled a lot of things because people have such cheap interest rates. So to have more sales, it helps to have more to sell, but that's not happening in the housing market. Zillow reported that September inventories were 10% lower than a year ago and 40% below 2019 levels. We've talked about that a lot, this inventory issue because people don't want to get out from underneath their awesome interest rate that they refinanced into. You know, Freddie Mac estimated 2021 that we had a shortage of 3.8 million units, a shortage which has gotten worse as a result of rising prices. So well, how's this happening? First, if you have an existing home today, the odds are pretty good that you have a cheap financing, like we've mentioned down to 2.7%. Roughly four in five homeowners with mortgages have an interest rate below 5%. So that's, that's most of them. And nearly one quarter of a rate below 3%. So if I have a rate below 3%, there's no way I'm refinancing that. You know, obviously not refinancing, but you gotta think long and hard about moving. So with rates now close to 7%, many homeowners aren't moving, which is intensifying a shortage of homes for sale. That's what we've been saying all along. 
Second, the lack of existing properties for purchases helping new home sales, as the National Association of Home Builders has pointed out. Despite mortgage rates that are at a 23-year high, new home sales posted a double-digit percentage gain in September because of lack of inventory in the resale market. So when we don't have you know, resales, so I own my home, I sell it, maybe I move into something bigger, move into something smaller, that's creating the inventory decline. But new builders, because they're, it's a brand new home, that's where a lot of buyers have been going. And builders have been doing some pretty good credits. You know, they, they've done a lot of interest rate buy downs, a lot of things that help smooth those units. So that's alleviated the problem just a little bit. But regardless of demand, there are only so many new homes that can be built because few workers are available. The industry had 431,000 job openings in September. So builders, while they'd probably like to build more, they can't because they don't have enough workers. You know, we had crazy low unemployment also over the last couple of years. And that is finally starting to ease also with this super hot jobs market. So is there anything in the cards that suggests that inventories will significantly increase in 2024? One option is likely to stand out. And we've been talking about this a lot in Salt Lake, the continuing effort to end single family zoning. So in Utah, in Salt Lake especially, we've been talking a lot about accessory dwelling units, ADUs. The Salt Lake City Council has been pushing these a lot and making them easier to do. Kind of like a mother-in-law apartment or something in your backyard. So Freddie Mac estimates there were 1.4 million ADUs in 2020, a number that will surely climb as single family zoning limits continue to be repealed. Properties with more one or more ADUs can add to the housing supply and they can also change real estate economics. That's because ADU income can be used to qualify for purchase financing under new FHA guidelines, a change that will no doubt spread to other loan programs. So what does that mean for first time home buyers? You know, if you as a first time home buyer, someone who's fighting with affordability issues, if you find a home that has a basement rental, has an ADU in the backyard, has you know you can actually do this up to four units you can use that income from the other units to qualify for your mortgage a lot of people call it house hacking this is how i actually bought my first house it was a mother-in-law in salt lake and we ran out the basement to help with affordability issues um so this is kind of what's going to be happening in the, in the future you know with first-time home buyers you know you can either get the condo townhouse that might be a lower price or you can get you know a single family home with a mother-in-law or an ADU or like a two unit thing. But luckily the government, you know, they're trying to respond by laxing these guidelines that the FHA guidelines that provide low down payments, but also help with affordability. If you're struggling with affordability, you know, you wanna talk about this, figure out a plan on how to get into your first home, please reach out in the comments below or go to hair.com to learn more. Thanks.